Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Let's get started. Bosses of Reddit. What's the craziest thing a worker has done at work? Did you fire them? Part 4. This is kind of the reverse. My boss did something crazy while I was an employee. An older, middle-aged man who owned a business came in as a client. He owed us a sizable sum of money for services provided. He kept babbling on about BS until his wife called him in an emergency. When my boss questioned him once more regarding a check for past due invoices, this guy, while laughing, pulled out a blank check and said, here you go. Then, after we had finished our work on the hard drive we had prepared for him, he attempted to steal it. As I was working in the adjacent room, I heard our office door slam open and then open again a moment later. My boss was yelling, you don't want to do this, this isn't how you want to handle this, or something similar. Together with my colleague, I dashed out the door and down the stairs, staying inside to reach the first landing, where we saw my boss pushing on the fire door and trapping the client between it and the door frame. We were in complete shock. Here are two full-grown men, businessmen, yelling at each other and bickering while one smushes the other in the doorframe. Before the client was able to place the hard drive in his other hand on the opposite side of the door, my boss was also attempting to seize it from him. Just a game of keep away between professionals, you know? I didn't know what else to do, so I helped push on the door. This dude's assistant caught up with us, he just left her in our conference room, he ran off without her, and had the same dumbstruck reaction. Like, what the F? My boss said something like, this is the man you work for, how do you feel about that? He's stealing from us. My boss finally gave in to the client's complaints that, you're hurting my shoulder, you're hurting me! Naturally, this caused the client to become agitated and run out of the last hallway. The kicker was that his assistant actually owned the keys to the car they drove, which was hers. My boss and the client stalked each other in circles around this car until his assistant managed to shuffle out, still clueless as to what to do. My boss stopped pacing when she unlocked the car and the client threw the hard drive into the back seat before going to sit in the front passenger seat. He blinked, pulled open the other side's back door, and retrieved the hard drive. How dumb can you be? It was the most insane thing I have ever experienced at work. It won't be surpassed in my opinion. After that, we had a beer and tried to figure out what the H just happened. We had to stop doing business with that company. I wasn't the boss, but I helped my boss get a coworker fired. I was working in a record store at the time. Had this slacker kid that was all sorts of cocky for a coworker, always bragging about something. But he did his job, so we dealt with it. Now, before I go any further, know this. Record stores have an S ton of regulars, more than any other job I've ever had. You get to know your customers. We had a young woman come in all the time that was slightly special. She was good enough to go out on her own on the bus and be on her own for hours. Super sweet. Loved pop music. Each Tuesday, she'd come in and buy whichever new one came out. We started to put one aside for her each week. Then, we didn't see her for a month or so. I want to say NSYNC had a new album come out or something like that. I saw her come back in, no smile, no cheeriness. She snuck in and came over to me and asked for the CD. I asked her what's up and where she had been and if she was okay. She turned red and told me that it was embarrassing. I, not wanting to pry, told her about her stack of pop CDs and told her sorry she said. She asked about the slacker to make sure he wasn't here today. What did he do, is the first thing I said. Knew he did something in that moment. She wrote it down because she didn't want to say it out loud. Paraphrasing, it's been a long time. Hey, after work, a very crude phrase that was essentially as harassment. It sounded really disgusting. I asked her to wait there. I went and got the boss man. He came out and apologized profusely for what happened and bought her CDs personally. Corporate was called. They flew in or drove in. I don't remember. This was 10 years ago minimum. The next day when he came in, they took him in the office and flipped their ass on him. He was escorted out and they told us they'd handle things. 
We never heard any more about it, but our customer was never sad again. Edit. He admitted when he was confronted about it, from what I was told. Not that I'm a boss, but I did play a part in someone's termination. We had a significant amount of snowfall a few weeks ago in my big New England condo complex. Since our building is a condominium, we employ a landscaper to shovel and salt the walkways and plow the parking lots. I happened to receive a call around 10 in the morning while I was at home during the blizzard. Like most people, I like to wander around and do random things while on the phone. On this particular occasion, I did nothing but watch a young landscaping company employee plow the parking lot through the window of my bedroom. The young man appeared to be in his early and mid-twenties. Probably trying to do a good job and not have to make as many passes, I see that he's getting extremely close to some of the parked cars with the plow as I watch. He actually moved the parked car over about two feet by clipping its front during one of his passes. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who saw this since it was so early in the day and most people were either at work or otherwise holed up in their apartments. He just drives slowly by the car a few times to look for damage while I wait to see how the child responds. He eventually returns to his plowing duty, still missing nearby cars by a mere inch and still getting extremely close to some of the cars. He drives off after exchanging more tense glances for a few minutes. Now, the kid is young and probably s his pants when he hit the car. However, he didn't do anything like leave a note or get out of the truck to examine the car. I go outside to examine the car he struck and I notice that the bumpers cracked. I gave the complex manager a call right away to let her know what had happened so she could inform the car's owner. She responds that she recognizes the child from my description and says she will speak with the landscaping company. I get a response from the complex manager the following day. She tells me that she didn't get around to talking to the landscaping company until the next morning, and by that time, the kid hadn't fessed up to anything. He had hit and run for sure. According to her, the company assured her that they fired the kid in the hopes of not losing our contract. Reddit who has an a-hole neighbor slash HOA, what's your story? Part 4. Years ago, I had neighbors where everyone was involved in law enforcement. No, I'm not going to make fun of law enforcement in the post. The husband was a state sheriff, the wife was a city police officer, the son was training with the FBI, and the daughter was lieutenant. Seriously, the greatest family on earth, truly proud to wear the badge, and always done good for the community. Except for the wife. For some effing reason, this bee loved to abuse her power with people in the neighborhood. When me and my family first moved in, we had them come over and greet us. My dad was washing his car in the garage when they came over. Shook hands, talks about what they did, invited us over for dinner, the good old neighbor stuff. An hour later, my dad meets the neighbor's wife. She was in uniform standing right outside the garage door in the alleyway. My dad invites her in to greet her, but instead of greeting, he got a ticket for dumping waste in the alley. My dad was like, WTF, are you serious? She then tells my dad that it was illegal to wash his car in the alleyway because of the chemicals he was putting in the sewers. My dad then calls her husband outside via cell phone and tells him about the situation. He comes running out and tells her to effing stop. She continues anyways and goes on patrol. At this point, my dad is livid. Of course, he fights the ticket in court, but the wife doesn't show, and so he's let go with the ticket waived. Oh, there's more. After that, we effing have a party in the backyard with family, friends, and so on. She comes in uniform and starts to write us a ticket for a noise complaint when quiet hours were at 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. where we live. The husband sees WTF is going on and grabs the ticket, then proceeds to F and get livid at his wife for being such an effing a-hole. He even said that if she writes us a ticket and we take it to court, he would be there as testify against her. She stops the ticket and moves on. The husband and the kids profoundly apologizes for the wife slash mother and says that they don't know WTF is wrong with her and why she's been an a-hole to us. At this point, it's been going on for about five years. Again, everyone else in that house were effing great to us. They were the poster child of great neighbors, but the wife was a complete beat us. This moment, we decided to get revenge. She always complained about a neighbor who had a pigeon coop. Would try to write him tickets, but lost because the court said it was fine to have pigeons just as long as he kept them fed and clean.
From there, my dad, being the Eastern European man who's had experience keeping pigeons, we buy an effing barn of pigeons, about 80 to be exact. The neighbors throughout the neighborhood loved them because these pigeons performed tricks and flew high as F. The neighbor with the pigeon coop gave us a few pigeons saying that he was happy to see more pigeon owners. As for the bee neighbor, she literally gasped at the sight of them. She wanted to give us S for the pigeons, but the local police station has stopped her from harassing us after giving us so much F and S for nothing. Month later of me and my dad flying pigeons, she puts her house up for sale. My dad, being a savage, asks her why the house was for sale. She slams the door on him as he has a pigeon in his hand. The husband comes out and apologizes for the bee she has been to us for the past few years. He says they were selling the house because of how much S she's been given the neighborhood and that he feels that he's leaving in shame. He loved the neighborhood, but thanks to her, the neighborhood doesn't love her. No one holds pity towards him or his children, just his wife. To make matters worse, they had a Latin king spray paint their garage with targets as a warning that they need to leave or else. From there, they were forced to clean up the garage door, repaint it, and then sell the house at half price just to get the F out of there. The neighborhood was happy as F that they were leaving, but not on those terms. For one last goodbye, my family bought them dinner. The wife came by as well, but didn't say one word. We shook everyone's hand and said our goodbyes. Not seen or heard from them in years. To start, I'll admit that I don't have all the facts because this occurred to a friend of mine a while back. We were residents of a tiny rural farming community that's been experiencing tremendous growth as of late, but I'll spare you the tedious details. The land's being sold by many elderly farmers. You can accomplish this in two ways. They can sell it in pieces by dividing it into plots. Even though it's slower, this usually results in more money. All at once, they can sell it. Once again, a less expensive and quicker procedure. The land was located in a developing area, so the farmer figured he could make more money by selling it in lots. A good friend of mine purchased some land and constructed a lovely home on it. A major corporation subsequently began purchasing the remaining lots in order to construct a township there. They used my friend's name to make all the lots seem the same. They had a similar style to his, but he spent more money on his house, which was nicer. Because his property's value went up even more, he didn't mind. Keep in mind that my friend resided right in the middle of the neighborhood. The view was the deciding factor in his purchase of the house in the lot center. Reflecting on it now, I realize it wasn't the smartest choice. The homeowner who developed the area also established a homeowners association. For reasons that should be readily apparent, my friend consistently turned down invitations to join. Despite being in the middle of the subdivision, he was exempt from joining due to certain legal reservations regarding existing property. He kept up pleasant relations with the HOA chairman and a few locals. He frequently received invitations to HOA events and would occasionally accept them. Until a new president assumed control of the HOA, he relished it. The new president apparently didn't bother to verify my friend's membership in the HOA. He simply assumed it. Regarding some irregularities he had observed and the outstanding fees owed to the HOA, he contacted my bro. My friend attempted to clarify that he was not a member of the HOA, but the new president simply disregarded him and continued to ignore him. Apparently, my friend just chose to disregard all the fees and obligations. Now, my friend was a winter bird. This is just a fancy way of saying that someone spends the winters in the north and the summers in the south, in case you didn't know. In retirement, they often split their time between two homes where they are well cared for by loving relatives. Specifically, my best friend was a doctor who split his time between two hospitals, one in the north and one in the south, depending on the season. It was a success in the end. You can probably picture the look of horror on his face when he returned home to discover that someone else had changed the locks and was now living there. The HOA chair knew he took an annual trip south, so he served eviction notices to all of his tardy tenants once he was gone. The house was sold and a new family moved in while my brother was away by his real estate agent friend. In order to initiate legal action against the HOA, my friend reached out to his southern lawyer friend. Who won, an incorrect small town HOA or a big city lawyer? 
By the way, did I mention that the family who moved in with my friend also became involved? They too sued the HOA, citing the pressing need to relocate and the substantial loan they had taken out against the property as motivation. I don't know exactly what happened, but I do know that the HOA chairman lost his house and left town, and I assume he probably took the brunt of the attack. If you want to watch the part 3, click the link here. We're very, very glad to see you all in the comments again. Many, many thanks for your support.